Hello and hey, Tim Messer with Golf with Your Friends. This time going to be the Haunted Classic Guide for the updated official release 1.114. It's going to be a fun one. Not usually my favorite course, but here we go. Hole number one. We're going to go ahead and go for the dunk on the first shot. Just over a three power here. Just kind of a a squeeze more than three directly at the hole it's pretty simple once you kind of get a feel for it and it's no longer as sorry I should, it's harder to leave the course if you goof it up but it can still happen so look out for that hole number two i like to go just about three and a half power a little bit left of center because i like to catch the the rim of that hole and come back and go back in uh might be possible to get in with like three and a quarter or something like that but I kind of like that shot as it is going to get over the hump every single time. Hole number three, just above two power, about two and an eighth, aiming at the right side of that thing that I like to call a buckle. And we just barely have enough power. I used a little bit too too little there. Uh, unfortunately, the, the ground near the bucket has gotten a little bit weird, and a lot of these hills on this particular course are getting a little strange, but that's what we use. Hole four, there's like an archway in the distance. We're going to aim at the right side of it, full power. And if you would have told anybody, like, the four years ago when this course came out, that hole four was going to be the easiest of the first four holes, we all would have laughed in your faces. But here we are, and a fun hole in one. Hole five, I like to aim for this particular buckle. Full power, the corner of it. I used to like to use the hill on the other side, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go just three power, aiming... I like to use one of those marks on the pieces of wood if you can catch it uh it is very specific so you'll have to play with it a few times and again without ha having a bowl it's going to be a pretty hard to replicate to every single time but it still works when you nail it hole six we can't land on the cart anymore so we're on full power aiming at the leg of the chair i want to make sure the cart is out of the way of course and for the second shot we want to go two power or just barely barely over two powered aiming right at the buckle For a simple two, I don't know if the hole-in-one can be possible or if the cart was just goofing around and I can't get on it anymore. Yeah, other people can, but we'll play it from there. Hole seven, I was having a time trying to get the hole-in-one here. It's absolutely possible. It's just so specific with timing and stuff that I can't quite get it, but you go about full power. This is the safe shot. If you're trying to get the hole-in-one, you want to go like three and three quarters-ish and aim at the same time and release at the same time. But just as the bottom of the ghost rounds that corner, you want to go ahead and release a shot, and you can get up there for an easy two, or possibly the one. Hole eight. Got to aim right here with this exact power. Uh, this is pretty specific because we need to hit the hole dead center so that it hits the back of the cup and drops in for the hole in one. It takes a couple tries, but you'll get the hang of it pretty quick. It's not as hard as I made it sound. Hole nine. You want to make sure you're getting the the line here kind of centered up on your on your cursor. It is very important for the bounce that comes off of this wall. It kind of straightens out a little bit if you hit exactly on the line. And we want to aim towards the this side of that buckle you see here, full power. And then we go straight into the hole. Uh, and obviously, if you miss left or right, you need to just adjust the opposite way from the buckle. Hole 10, we no longer have the hole in one, sadly, but I like to aim for the right side of the far crate that's just peeking up over the top of this hill. And then a second full power shot to follow. There's kind of like a white line vaguely on the stone in the background and also a little notch in the metal part. I kind of go between those and let it loose. Again, much easier to see what I'm doing than me trying to explain exactly what's happening there, but play with it a little bit and it'll be a nice two for you as well hole 11 this would have been the hole in one if they would kind of clean up the out of bounds boxes because this is considered out of bounds so there used to be a ram shot as well don't think that's in the game anymore so our safe two is going to be shooting at the books over here full power going through the couch coming back onto the course definitely in bounds the whole time and we're going to go ahead and shoot in for an easy two hopefully we can get a hole in one on this soon but for right now, it does not appear to exist. Hole 12. 
used to be able to go off those books and get that to the last hole. Unfortunately, I think that's gone as well. But in the meantime, we'll go full power straight ahead. I like to get a little bit to the left of the line if I can get the point of the cursor facing that way. And from there, there's a dark line on the corner piece right here. When it get right up next to the very right side, but definitely off of the right side. It'll become more apparent when you're in the game to see exactly where you're aiming there. But another full power shot for a two eagle on the par four. Hole 13, again, maybe a hole in one, but the safe safe two is going to be three and a quarter power. And we're trying to go book to book here because we'll get a little bit more speed and get out in front of the area where the hole is. If you do go book to book, it's easy to overshoot is why I'm saying it like that. So we'll just go ahead and knock it in for a simple two. Hole 14, the timing and power is everything. So we're going to take just a tiny bit off. You got to aim just left of the center line. And you only want to bounce once on the coffin. Otherwise, you will get shucked too far to the right to make it in the hole. It's much trickier than it should be. So just play around with it. And if you always end up just right of the hole, just play around a little bit with the timing and you'll be just fine. Hole 15, I'm honestly throwing up the white flag when it comes to this hole. I don't know what it is just yet because the couches are what we used to use to get easy twos and they don't have any collision anymore. So this is just sort of me playing regularly. The strategies are going to apply. Obviously, we get kind of close, but uh, two is definitely, definitely possible. It would also be very hard and require basically a pixel perfect shot on the second shot just to like to know where you end up from the first shot, that sort of thing. It's not as hard as I'm making it sound. But hole 16, we want to go three and a half power, just under if we can manage it. We're aiming at the crease all the way down there, but make sure you hit on the right side of said crease. That way we bounce in the way that we want to. From here, we want to go just over three power, aiming sort of at the binding of the orange and green on the second shelf, the books, like in between them. It's very specific because we need to hit the hole, and if you go past it, you will not come back into the bowl on the same shot. It's still a three, but that's a lot trickier than it probably looks like and it's involved as much as I say it is there. Hole 17, two is possible. I used to use the same shot over and over and over to use like the cobwebs to get down. My recommendation is just to play the hole normally as you would, but if you wanna see just like a crazy flashy two, we're gonna go off that particular kind of buckle, and then the second shot we will take a little bit off. Uh, two tiles up this hill, kind of aiming right here and bounce off this wall. Obviously, this is not the recommended shot. You just want to play the, the hole normally, because otherwise you're doing a crazy two. But I just figured I'd show something a little bit fun uh, for that hole. And then hole 18. Again, you're kind of just playing the hole again, but I do have some strategies for you. I've always gone to that particular... Sh uh, I was going to say shot, but I meant to say pixel. Full power, and we're going to go left of this crease, because anytime you're shooting at a crease, it's super dangerous, so we like to just clear as far as we can away. For the third shot, we're going to go ahead and just take a little bit of power off. It's definitely possible to three this, but this ground on this thing is the weirdest uh, texture ground in the game. It's so bouncy, you can't control anything, it's so lumpy. Uh, so don't worry about too much trying to get that one figured out. But for now, that's a three, another three yet again on a par five. So we're, we're going to go ahead and take it. Historically, this has been one of probably my least favorite courses. Uh, I had a nice uh hand in making that score get a lot lower for the uh for the record in in the past and i just kind of burned out on it i think and just because it's so tedious i think it's most people's least favorite course um i always get the least amount of views on the guides for it but people also want to know how to do it because it's so hard it's just there's no really easy answers and it's just kind of a shame it could use a little bit of a rework but uh, i'll see that when we see that so i'll get to these other guides thanks for watching thanks for listening be safe, guys.